I uh, appreciate everybody coming out here um, and talking about PowerShell. Josh, why don't you talk about yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Josh Kelly. Uh, I'm a security analyst for a Fortune 1000 company. I do pen testing, app security, uh, log analysis, forensics, uh, just pretty much anything technical and security. They usually come to me first. Wait, hang on. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that pearl there real quick. What? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Pearl. He hates that, so I'm not allowed to code in Pearl anymore. So, it and, uh, is a filthy language. Yeah, and he's my boss, so. Banned. <laughs> a little bit about me. I'm a director of security for a Fortune 1000. I have heavy experience in penetration testing, exploitation development, and all that other good stuff. He loves uh, Pearl. I can kick you off the stage. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm the creator of the Social Engineer Toolkit. Uh, so if you guys have used the Social Engineer Toolkit, I wrote that, surprisingly. Um, and I'm with the socialengineer.org uh, group. Uh, so if uh, you follow the podcast, uh, the Social Engineer Framework, um, really good site, social-engineer.org. My, my only plug of the, 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 the evening here. Uh, heavy background in intelligence, uh, deployed twice to Iraq and a couple times to other Middle Eastern countries. So why don't we do a little brief intro into PowerShell if you're not really familiar with it. Um, PowerShell came out in 2006, it was called? Uh, it was called Monad when it was first released. And uh, really, I mean, it's been integrated into every operating system out there. So Windows uh, 7, Server 2008, any new operating system that comes out has PowerShell installed by default. Uh, in Server 2008, uh, you can uninstall it. Uh, in Windows 7, it's actually embedded, so there's no removing it. Um, it's integrated into Exchange, Active Directory, and pretty much any other new component that comes out of uh, Microsoft's baselines uh, for the programs. And what's nice about it, it actually has uh, full integration into the .NET framework. So from the PowerShell uh, command line interface, you can actually call uh, the .NET framework and pretty much program whatever you want to. So if you haven't seen it, that's what a PowerShell shell looks like. Fun. <laughs> So PowerShell for, for security professionals, I mean, I'll be the first one to admit the usefulness and power of PowerShell. Um, you know, from, from an IT perspective, it's been pretty well adopted. Uh, people are using it on a regular basis to perform administrative tasks, um, automate certain things, as well as, you know, provide a lot of, um, you know, tasks that they normally couldn't perform through it. Uh, very similar to, you know, the, the Unix type uh, platforms, um, and it's, it's pretty, pretty soft from that perspective. For us as uh, security professionals, it's also very good. Um, it allows us to basically program tools, um, write specific code functions, things that we would normally wouldn't have access to, uh, to be able to execute PowerShell uh, type attacks or uh, post-exploitation type uh, attacks all through PowerShell, which is uh, definitely a plus. So why don't you talk about the execution restriction policies? Um, yeah, so they have this uh, s kind of security feature called the execution uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not good at this. <laughs> uh, the first policy they have is restricted. Um, it pretty much it res limits uh, the execution of anything, of any PowerShell script on there. You can only execute things through the PowerShell command line. Uh, the, ex the next one's all signed, requires all scripts to be signed before they can be executed. Third one is, uh, is remote sign, and that means anything that you download off the internet has to be signed. And then the final one is unrestricted, which allows you to execute any PowerShell script that you want on the system. So um, PowerShell by default comes with restricted. So you know when you install an operating system, PowerShell will have it in restricted mode. So the first thing we're going to go and talk about today is um, the release of Metasploit Module 1. Uh, we'll be definitely talking with HD and getting these committed to the repositories. Uh, but traditionally, when you're doing a post-exploitation scenario, in this scenario, we're actually going to be using MS SQL. Um, in Windows Server 2003 and below, uh, the way that we generally deliver payloads through something that we don't have code execution over, i.e. triggering like a buffer overflow or having direct access to memory, uh, what you need to do is you need to figure out a way of getting your payload onto that system, right? And so traditional methods have been VB script, TFTP, FTP, um, and the notorious debug method. And the debug method, what it does is it, uh, it takes a binary and it converts it to hexadecimal and then it puts it on the system itself and then it calls Windows Debug in order to convert it back to a binary for us. Uh, so after our talk, I think at DEF CON 16, they removed Debug. And, um, and so now in Server 2008 and Windows 7, 64-bit platforms, uh, Debug is no longer in there. 
Um, so basically we lost our method of the debug conversion um, in newer operating systems. Um, one thing to mention about PowerShell is no one's looking at this right now. Uh, the AV companies, HIPS providers, everything, uh, it pretty much gets past clear. We tested about 20 different um, vendors out there and all of them are not checking this type of stuff. So it's actually kind of nice. So let's do a quick demo here. It's pretty. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go from very beginning to end. So we're going to enumerate the system and, and port scan it looking for open ports. And uh, essentially we'll find uh, 1433 which is the default for MS SQL. Uh, MS SQL can be changed so it can be something completely different. So all you have to do is query port 1434 UDP and it tells you the port number. Um, but in this instance it's default 1433. Uh, can I make the font a little bit larger? Let me see here. Dude, totally messed me up here. It doesn't, the increase size is uh, blocked out here. Let me see if I can. Hey, 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 let's it's not go video. the Mac route here. Yeah, let's not go the Mac route. It's a video, so that's what I can't, I can't up, up in a fortune. I'll tell you what's going on as we're going through. Can you zoom in? No, it doesn't, it doesn't say increase. It's the Mac. So um, we load MSF console and we search for the MS SQL login uh, auxiliary module. And this module is our the scanner. Uh, this module basically will go through and scan for SQL servers um, and then try to brute force the SA account, uh, which is installed by default if you're using integrated or basic uh, authentication, uh, SQL uh, authentication. And we're going to brute force it and we find a password of blank, which by the way, I guarantee 100%, you'll find that all over. So we're going to load the new Windows MS SQL module and there's different flags you can set within uh, Metasploit and when we wrote this payload we just added another flag to it and then added the code behind in the, the core libraries of Metasploit. So we're just setting up our host, we're going to do a reverse interpreter and we're going to set the use PowerShell to true. Now we're going to exploit it and what's going to do is going to take a Metasploit module, convert it to hex, put it onto the underlying operating system, call PowerShell and PowerShell basically is going to take that executable or that ex uh, hexadecimal representation, reconvert it back to a binary for us and then execute. And if you see here, uh, we got an interpreter shell. So. No claps? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry, pop a box, I apologize. So this is just a small example of conversion. Uh, alter, uh, conversely, we could have used uh, base64 encoding. So just you know, echoed it onto the system via base64 and then had it reconvert it back to a binary force through base64 as well. Uh, either way works fine. So the execution restriction policies, one thing we want to mention is Microsoft isn't touting this as a security feature. Um, so it's not something that they rely on in securing the PowerShell environment. Um, specifically because it really doesn't provide much security around the environment itself. So even if you have the um, execution restriction policy set to all sign and um, you know requires a certificate in order to um, use it, there's ways around it. So it just so you understand that most users believe or you know traditionally are led to believe um, just from you know from the PowerShell environment that it potentially could help you from being exploited. However, when you're talking about a post exploitation scenario, um, it's definitely out the window. So. Just to prove a uh, proof of concept, and special thanks to Kathy Peters back there. Kathy, you want to raise your hand? Kathy, raise your hand again. Then I saw you. Okay. Um, we uh, we wrote a tool called Create Command, and what it does is the the contents of the file are can 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 concatenated. There we go. Compressed and converted to a base64 single string. Uh, the bootstrap uh, code is then uh, created, and it calls encoded command arguments. Uh, to execute it. So basically what it means is we can take a PowerShell based script that would typically be um, restricted and then load a PowerShell environment that has all of our stuff loaded into it and all we have to do is call those functions. Uh, so then it will actually execute on the operating system itself. So what does this mean? With the most restrictive policy set on PowerShell we can still execute whatever we want. Again this isn't supposed to be used as a security method. Uh, no need to disable execution restriction policies, no need to edit the registry, no need to set flags, no need to reboot, uh, nothing like that. So we'll do a quick demo of create command. And by the way, Mac made this, so it's very pretty. 
So in this example, in Server 2008, you can actually set it through the command line interface, but in Windows 7, it's a little bit different. Uh, but this is just an example of on the operating system to show you a representation of what we can do. We take a tool uh, called PowerDump and um, we basically output it and it rewrites the, the um, PowerShell executable as a bad file. So now you see our execution restriction policy is set to restricted. It could be all signed, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna run a service uh, that starts a, uh, starts a system so that we can dump the hash values out of the operating system all through PowerShell. I, that's what I did. It's not working. Sorry. So we load the PowerShell environment here, and uh, you, if you can see, I guess, <laughs> you're loaded into a PowerShell that says load complete. From here, all you have to do is type dump hashes, and it dumps the SAM database and the hash values for us. And uh, the dump hashes, you'll see in a second, was purely coded in PowerShell completely. So the, the hash extraction uh, works in Server 2008. Uh, Windows 7, 64-bit, x86, it doesn't necessarily matter uh, as long as PowerShell is enabled on it. Again, special thanks to Kathy for that. There you go. <laughs> oh, there we go. I got a clap. Sweet. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so since we have full access uh, to the PowerShell and .NET libraries, we can pretty much do anything we want, uh, which is really great. Uh, releasing today, uh, so after this talk, we'll put on our website, uh, secmaniac.com, um, we'll put uh, all the proof of concept code. So we'll have a reverse shell, uh, purely coded in PowerShell, a bind shell, uh, purely coded in PowerShell, as well as the create command, and we're about to see next. So we're going to do a PowerShell based SAM dump all through Interpreter. So from the command line interface, all I have to do is type run power dump. And you can see it's x64 base and server 2008 R2 fully patched. And we get the hash values out of the system through interpreter. All through PowerShell. Oh, it's actually, the, if you see the top, it's uh, secmaniac.com. And one thing I have to say is, uh, you know, Microsoft has been very helpful on this. We released all the code to them well ahead, the PowerPoints, everything else. So uh, very responsive uh, to what we're doing here and uh, have to give a shout out to them. So the interpreter based module will dump the SAM database purely through PowerShell, works on all operating systems and all that good stuff. Now, before we get into to this, I wanted to show you a real quick uh, and cool demo. Um, Josh, why don't you talk a little bit about the, the Tensi device? All right, so I'm sure you guys probably heard about these things. These are called Tensi's. Uh, what they are is they're uh, Adreno compatible microcontrollers. And Dave was lucky enough to buy a few dozen of these for us, so we've been playing with these at work all day. Uh, they're really cool. Uh, what the Tensi, what's cool about the Tensi's is that they actually include a uh, HID, a human interface device library already inside the, uh, the IDE environment. So we can have it emulate keyboard, mouse, uh, and any other type of human interface device you can think of uh, just by you know, setting it in the IDE. And it allows us to send keyboard strokes, mouse commands to the computer. And uh, makes for some really interesting pranks and some other cool stuff. Yeah, so uh, a real funny story because you know, we're gonna, this is the, the f fast talk, right? Um, we, we decided to solder uh, one of the Tensi devices into a keyboard um, and basically replace one of our, you know, coworkers with the keyboard and had it move 100 pixels, the mouse 100 pixels every, like, you know, 10 minutes or something like that. And I didn't know because, I you know, I, I left work uh, for, like, three days. Yeah, this was all me. Yeah, and so I figured the guys would tell him once he started swapping out his, uh, his docking station, his mouse, getting a new uh, uh, computer arm made in. Uh, but, no, he didn't, they didn't tell him. So. No, Dave finally told him when he was going for his second computer. Yeah. So, 
yeah, it was it was pretty fun. Uh, but big big shout out to Iron Geek though. Uh, without the libraries that he had on his website, and without like uh, having that blog post, uh, we wouldn't have even known about these things, and we wouldn't have had so much fun with them. Yeah, and he's giving a talk on uh, Saturday at DefCon. Really good uh, stuff coming out of that. So definitely want to check that one out. But what I wanted to show you real quick is the the Social Engineer Toolkit. Uh, built into the new version, uh, has this uh, programming capable into it, and we have a PowerShell based payload through it. I just wanted to show you real quick. So we're going to load set, and actually I can zoom this one in. And maybe I can, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> there we go, thank you. Please forgive Dave, he's learning how to use a Mac. Yeah, I'm just going to skip this one, I think. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Is there a font? Ah. Uh, Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Go over very. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's NCAA uh, So, from the Social Engineer Toolkit, it's got a lot of pre built in attack vectors into it. Really cool tool if you haven't checked it out. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Tinsy HIDDEB method, and we're going to do the PowerShell HTTP GET method. And set will basically set everything up for you. It'll create the payload for you, backdoor the executable through Metasploit, um, so it gets around antivirus, um, and then it'll pre-program the intensity device for you in a sense. I'll show you in a second. So all we're doing is generating the Metasploit payload, encoding it using the backdoor executable method through Metasploit, and encodes it, and then it extracts what's called a PDE file. Now in the Adreno language, the PDE file is what you use your code in order to upload to this specific device. Um, so what we're going to do is it's going to set up a listener for us. We're going to copy this to my desktop, and then we're going to drag this over here. And this is the Adreno programming language, uh, the, the IDE. Now, from here, this little Tinsy device thing is actually going to upload the compiled um, code that we have onto our Tinsy device. So I have this little Tinsy device here uh, that we modified, and we're going to put that in, and we're going to upload it. It's uploading right now. And we're good. So now we have our program Tensy device that's not malicious in nature. What we're going to do is we're going to plug this into a uh, server 2008, R2, fully patched, all that good stuff, right? And I'm going to sit here and watch. Uh, there's a little bit of delay. There's a little bit of delay up in here because I'm, I'm, I was going to explain what's going on between, so I probably should have removed the delay a little bit. But uh, what it just happened is it used the keystrokes to type out our PowerShell based payload, um, had it download our interpreter payload, and now it just executed. And now we got a shell. Or popped a box. So what does this mean? Um, really, antivirus is not picking this up. Yeah, antivirus, HIPS, n none of that stuff is picking this up. So everything that we're writing in PowerShell uh, is completely um, missed by that. Uh, they do catch one thing. There was like a Trojan written back like in 2006 or 2007 uh, that was just kind of a proof of concept back when it was still codenamed Monad. Uh, but that was real crappy and uh, didn't really do much and it relied on peer-to-peer -peer networks. But this stuff is totally off their radar. <laughs> And what I'll say is um, the usefulness of, of PowerShell really does help us from, from a security standpoint of doing post-exploitation type scenarios that you necessarily wouldn't have traditionally. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing that PowerShell is in there at all in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, again, this isn't a, a rip against PowerShell anyway, but what I will say is that, you know, from the security standpoint, there's a lot of things that we can be doing uh, and a lot of things that we can be coding that we're not doing right now uh, through PowerShell that we didn't have available to us. So as IT is using... Uh, you know, the sysadmins are using PowerShell for automation of tasks. We should definitely be using it too uh, from a security standpoint. I mean, you can do automation of, you know, baseline, um, you know, um, minimum security baselines, deploying them uh, throughout your entire organization, automated, uh, and doing continuous monitoring of it. I mean, it's really, really powerful. Um, and in, in the new version, you can actually do remoting capabilities. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, so the ability to, uh, the future plans that we're going to be doing this is uh, basically to do process injection and code uh, injection capabilities within PowerShell. So injecting into existing processes and being able to manipulate and cross over to other processes. Um, and then the ability to deploy security baselines to multiple systems and ensure enforcement just as a, a countermeasure. Um, real quick, uh, we wrote all the proof of concept code, so it's going to be up on the website in version one. So it's compatible with all versions of PowerShell, so you don't have to worry about having version two installed. So you can use it on your uh, XP SP3 you know, workstation that has it installed. So, as is in line with uh, doing perfect timing, does anybody have any questions? You can be logged in as anyone. As long as you have access to PowerShell, you can run it. So, you can, so the power the shell that you actually got was just access right to that user? Was Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You're running under the context of that user account, correct. Yep. Good question. Um, we ha we actually haven't worked with the the AV vendors uh, as far as looking into this, um, but I mean it's definitely something we should definitely should do. Um, when we did this, I mean we definitely wanted to contact Microsoft and, and let them know what we're doing, but it actually didn't even blip our minds to to do the AV guys. But yeah, even Microsoft agreed that this was a oversight on the AV part that right. they need to look into this as well. Right. I was up. I'm sorry. What did you say? I'm just curious. Like next week, they're all gonna. I'm sure they're going to be going to our site uh, every every five minutes looking for the the PowerShell scripts, and and they'll be they'll definitely be getting flagged. But you never yeah, know. just like they do with set. Yeah, set every day. Any other questions? Well, hey guys, I really appreciate coming out. Um, you can always go to www.secmaniac.com and uh, definitely follow us on Twitter. Uh, Dave underscore R E L one K Relic and Winfang ninety eight. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.